And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. I think Robinson Crusoe is one of the great stories of fiction, uh, and so I was really excited to hear about the game. The game itself plays fairly similar to the story of Robinson Crusoe, with the exception that there are multiple people involved, um, and and here it almost looks like Treasure Island. But it but the gameplay itself feels like Robinson Crusoe. What Robinson Crusoe, Adventure on a Cursed Island is, is it's a cooperative game. And I'll say straight up that this is a cooperative game that's really not like any that I've played before. It has a lot of the typical elements of a cooperative game, but more than that, it, it just, well, you know what? Let me show you. Now realize that I'm not gonna go over every detail of this game because it is a fairly complex game. There's a lot going on. Once you know what you're doing, the gameplay will go smoothly. Of course, don't we said it about every game. But, I mean, still, there's a, a, a good deal. One of the coolest things of this game is the fact that there are scenarios, and in this case, this is the uh, first scenario, the castaway scenario. Each scenario has a very specific number of rounds, has some equipment printed on this card that you can get only in this scenario, has some specific things that happen as the game progresses, and um, you know, tells you how you get victory points if you want to score your, your thing, and just basically the goal of the scenario. So this one's castaways. In this one, you're simply just trying to survive an island, starting a fire. In this one, there's a cursed island. You have to go around, and you gotta be careful because you have to exercise this island. Um, then we have scenario three, Jenny needs help, rescue Jenny. Then we have a volcano on the island that's going to erupt. Then we have Cannibal Island where you're fighting against the cannibals. And you'll notice that each of these scenario cards has a different look to it. I thought that was very cool. It has a almost, you know, this one has that Indiana Jones font and this one here has the kind of a freaky deaky font. And then we have the Robinson family. And so uh, there, this one, there's no hope of being rescued. So you need to basically build up. Each of these scenarios gets, uh, very hard. I haven't played every single one of them, and but I haven't uh, won any of them either. Whew, there is a lot in this game, so let's focus on just some of the stuff in the game. Each This is where the player's camp will start. Well, at least this is where it starts in the initial scenario. This shows you what resources you get, wood and food. Those are the two main things that you'll be wanting to get, and this is where your camp is going to be. Each turn of the game, players will follow a, a specific thing, and I'm not going to go through how a game turn actually goes, but I'm just kind of give you an overview that each player is going to have some worker placement tokens, and you're going to put these on different things that you're trying to do. Maybe you're trying to explore, maybe you're trying to build yourself a knife, maybe you're trying to build shelter. There's different things that you can do over the course of the game. As the game progresses, you might get more of these, but they're limited to a specific action. So this brown one here can only be used on a build action, or a green one can only be used on an explore action. And each player will have some of these. Each player also will have a card that shows about that character. Here's the soldier, for example, and you can be male or female on each of these. Uh, the carpenter, the explorer, the cook. And as you pick which of these you want to be, uh, there's a couple uh, special abilities that you can use over the course of the round. There's a piece of equipment, like for example, a spear that you can build. And there's also a hit point track down here at the bottom where you can keep track of how many hit points you have before you die. There's little arrows here. Every time you pass one of those arrows, your morale track will go down. But morale affects everybody. Up here, there's a morale track track that will go over the course of the game. It starts here kind of at neutral, but it can easily go down or it can move up. And depending on where it is at any point in time, depends on the starting player, how many determination tokens they get or lose. Determination tokens can help you out quite a bit over the course of the game. And so you want to get those if at all possible. So these actions that you can take, mostly as I said, will involve building things. You can go, try to change your 
camp on the thing to a shelter, work on the roof, build a palisade to keep out wild beasts, or upgrade your weapon strength. Or you can build all these different things down here as long as you meet the prerequisites. Some of these, the prerequisite is simply finding a specific type of terrain. For example, to get bricks, you just need to find hills. While to get the raft here, I, you need two wood and you need to have already put the, discovered the rope and putting the rope together and see to get rope you need to find another specific type of terrain. So there's different things that you can build and do. You can also explore. So when you explore, to turn over more tiles, to find maybe a better place for camp, to find animals that you can hunt. These animals, when you find them, are added to a deck. Or to draw from piles just to see what things you might find. You might find food or maybe uh, a weird temples or all kinds of things that can happen. But what's interesting, oh, and then the third thing is you can gather. You can pick up resources, or you can go down here and just simply increase morale or heal hit points if you have them. But if you notice here, there's decks of cards and dice. That's because these are three of the main things that you're doing. Building, using, uh, uh, gathering resources, or exploring. When you do that, if you send one person to do the thing, then you have to roll the dice. If you send two people, you do not have to roll the dice. You say, well, why wouldn't you just send two people all the time? Well, because you only have so many people and there's only so many things you can do. When you roll these dice, you roll all three dice. One of the dice tells you whether you get a hit point or whether you lose a hit point or not. See the heart there? That means you lose a hit point. If you roll a blank, you're fine. One of them shows you whether you succeed it or not. If it shows this symbol, you succeed it. If it shows you this, that means you don't succeed, but you get two determination tokens. And this shows you whether you have to draw an event card or not. Basically, what you want to get, if possible, is two blanks and a success. Because when you draw these event cards, they often will have an event that occurs, and they sometimes it will give you a future event. Let me show you, for example, here. Here's Monkeys Watch You. This doesn't do anything to you when you initially draw it, but then you'll shuffle it into the event deck, and when it shows up, they're going to destroy half your roof or your palisade, round it down, and then you'll draw another card. Um, this is when you build. Here you can put a palisade, or, put, or you put a marker in your character's belly, and then you shuffle this card in the event deck, and then when it shows up, if you don't have medicine, the character with this uh, has only one action available this round and then you'll discard the thing and draw another card. So if you notice, these things are things that might happen from building. Here a predator visits your camp. Over here, for example, when you're exploring, you'll have different cards that will show up. Here you just discard two uh, determination tokens. Here you, a wild dog, you get hit, hurt and it gets shuffled into the deck and then a dog comes back. Or for example, here's a tiger. And you have to decide whether you're going to stay outside the camp and hide. And if you stay outside the camp, you're going to, you know, get hurt because you have no shelter. Or you're going to go back to camp where the tiger will come after you and fight you. There's a lot going on in this game. And I mentioned the event deck. There's a huge pile of event cards that you'll have random ones put in here. And those event cards will then show up down here as they're drawn. And players will have to send down people to get rid of them. Because if it comes off, something bad might happen. Sometimes they're helpful, but uh, very rarely are they. At the end of each turn, after players have accomplished all this, there's a weather phase. And sometimes it's good weather. But whether it's good weather or not, you're going to have to keep warm at night and you're going to have to eat food each day. So you need to get resources for that. But eventually you'll be rolling uh, weather here, which shows that it gets colder and maybe it's raining and then you have to get rid of more food. Food will spoil overnight. Uh, really, there's so many bad things that can happen that it's just phenomenally that you survive at all. And there's a lot of things in this game I haven't covered. Like when you collect resources, they go here and you don't get to use them right away. Um, there's all sorts of tokens here that you can use and, and place on the board depending on what's going on. You, there might be, uh, no you might have to put a token down that no matter what happens, when next person time someone gathers, they have to draw an event card. Uh, each scenario has very specific rules, and you have to accomplish the goal of each scenario. For example, the castaways, you simply have to survive to the 10th, 11th, or 12th round, and you have to build fire which is out here, and you have to have enough wood that you've collected on the card here. You do that and you win. Seems simple, it's not. Robinson Crusoe has a lot of things uh, going for it. First of all, I think it is the most diverse, most happening 
uh, cooperative game that's in existence. There's a lot of cooperative games out there. And I would still give probably the lead of the pack to the more simplified ones that are hard, but, you know, Shadows Over Camelot, Pandemic, uh, th these games have very specific things that happen in them, and players work within those parameters. In Robinson Crusoe, it's very interesting because the things that happen to you happen because of what you do. I can't usually get hurt by a wild animal unless I decide to go out and hunt them. Or maybe I'm going out exploring, but I'm usually not going to get hurt by a wild animal building something. And the dice that I showed you, the brown, gray, and green dice are all different. There's just so much going on in this game. And you could play, see, I think it's fascinating, the Castaways expansion, I mean, a scenario, that could have been the game. That could have been the whole game, I think. And yet each of the six scenarios is exceedingly different, very different, and how you play them and how everything works together. Secondly, this is a tough, 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 tough game. Not only is it fairly complex, and the rules, the rules are good, but whew, I think they could have written them better because there's just so much going on. I had to read them multiple times before I, uh, I figured out what's going on. Even then playing the game the first couple times, it's like, what is going on? Now it runs smoother, but it's a hard game even beyond that to survive. This is, this is probably tied for the hardest cooperative game I've ever played. But Yggdrasil would be the other one. It's just a tough, tough game. But tough cooperative games are something that I approve of because they give you something to reach to, something to attain, to accomplish. And when you accomplish this, it's great. This is a very story-driven game. Everything in it isn't mechanical. It makes sense. Uh, it's tough, and you sit there and go, man, I don't know that I would do so well on the beach alone. Uh, with, in a game, we're not doing so well. And I think it has a lot of realistic things to it. I mean, it really comes together and gels together. And it, because there's so much going on with dice rolling and deciding to do that, there is a lot of discussion as you place your workers because it's not place them one at a time. It's kind of everyone talks and says, where are we going to send our people? But essentially, you have to work together and then you have to kind of put out fires as they appear and those fires just keep coming. But there also comes a point where to say, what's going to give me the best advantage? There's so many good things that can help you, but you'll never get them all. You'll never even get half of them. So you have to decide what's most important for survival or for accomplishing your mission. I like this. It is definitely not for everyone. It's a heavier cooperative game, one that's not going to go over well with everybody, but it certainly is one that I think offers a deep story, uh, almost infinite replayability, lots of fun, and you're going to die. Robinson Crusoe. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find the latest board game news at Dicetowernews.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Fun Again Games, the world's best game source. Fun Again Games has over 5,000 games available. Check them out at funagain.com. Hey, shut the door! <laughs> <laughs>